Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 97 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing well today. I want to thank all of you that have signed up for my membership. I really appreciate it. You help me do what I do. Uh, It's because of all of your support that I can continue to make this podcast and produce weekly episodes. So thank you so much for your support. And remember that if you want my specialized training, then you can sign up to become a member. Uh, And in particular, if you want my advanced podcast episodes where I speak at normal speed, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member or VIP and you'll receive two new advanced episodes every month where I speak fast at normal speed. So if the normal listening time podcast has gotten a little easy for you, then it's time for you to try the advanced episodes. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And you can also become a listening time VIP if you want to ask me questions regarding English or language learning, and I'll answer them in a video Q&A session every week. So you can also sign up to become a VIP if you're interested in that. All right, in today's episode, we're going to talk about minimalism. So this is a topic that has become more and more popular recently. And I'm not a minimalist in the sense that I don't consider myself a minimalist. I've never used this term to describe myself. Uh, I don't subscribe to any uh, philosophy about minimalism or anything like that. And so I won't be preaching uh, to you today. I won't be uh, trying to uh, get you to become a minimalist or anything like that. I just thought it would be a good topic to talk about because it's become a very popular uh, idea nowadays. And in some ways, I've realized that I am kind of a minimalist just by accident. Uh, It's not on purpose. Like I mentioned, I never use this label for myself. But I've realized that uh, I have a lot of these minimalistic tendencies in my life. So I'll talk a little bit about that in today's episode. And remember that you have the transcript available. So that's in the episode description below the episode. Go down and click on that if you need it. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, so let's talk about minimalism. First of all, let's try to get a definition of this word. Uh, I looked online and I looked at a few different definitions and I kind of formed my own here. Uh, This won't be a perfect definition and some of you might be minimalists and you might disagree with this definition. So I'm sorry, I'm just gonna try to uh, define it to the best of my ability. In English, we can use that phrase to the best of your ability to say that you're going to do your best on something. You're not going to do it perfectly, but you're going to try your best. So here's a definition that I kind of formed just based on other definitions that I saw. So minimalism is a philosophy or a lifestyle that promotes reducing or simplifying your possessions to obtain positive effects. So for example, some of these effects might be uh, that minimalism helps you focus more on the things that really matter. Uh, It might help you feel uh, like you have more freedom. And there can be many other different positive effects uh, that you might get from uh, following this type of lifestyle. So 
in terms of my life and how minimalism uh, fits in, uh, like I mentioned, I'm not a minimalist. I wouldn't say this, but I realized just by accident that I kind of follow some of these different patterns in different areas of my life. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about some of those today. And before I get into the details, I just wanted to mention some of the benefits that being a little more minimalistic has brought to my life. So for example, I've been able to focus on the really important things in my life or the important things for my career or things like that um, by not having so much, right? By having less, I'm able to kind of just focus on the little that I have, the, the little that is important right? So that's one benefit I've seen. Um, I've realized that uh, having less has also helped me not get distracted as easily. So I can focus more on uh, what I want to do or goals I want to achieve, and I can do that a little more easily, I think. Um, this has also helped me save money, for me, that's an important one. I don't want to waste money on things that I don't need. And so uh, there have been a lot of different benefits for me. But again, I'm not a minimalist. I have to stress that because uh, I know some of you probably are. And there are a lot of things that I don't really know about minimalism or some benefits or some uh, strategies or things like that. But I've just noticed that uh, having less stuff has brought these uh, benefits to my life. Uh, so let me talk about some of those different areas in which I have less than maybe the average person. So first of all, in my physical space. So for example, where I live, uh, the area, the physical space where I live um, tends to be minimalistic no matter where I am, uh, no matter which uh, apartment I've lived in, uh, which house or whatever, uh, I tend to have uh, maybe less furniture and less stuff uh, around my space than the average person. And I don't think I purposefully uh, make this my goal every time I move to a new apartment, but I think it ends up just happening. It just happens kind of by accident because this is my preference. And so why do I like having less stuff, less furniture, things like that? Well, in my opinion, it makes my space look cleaner. Uh, I think that in my experience, the more stuff I have in some space, the more easily it can look disorganized or cluttered. In English, we can use the adjective cluttered to talk about some space that has a lot of things that aren't very organized. They don't look very nice and clean. So for example, if you say that your desk is cluttered with papers, this means that you have different papers all over your desk in a disorganized way. So that's how my physical space tends to look if I have a lot of stuff and a lot of furniture. So that's why I think it looks cleaner if I don't have a lot of stuff. And having less in my physical space also helps me feel better. I think when I walk into a room that doesn't have so many things in it, I tend to feel a little more uh, at ease when I'm in a space like that. In English, when we say that you're at ease, this means that you're at peace, uh, you feel calm, etc. So I feel more at ease when I'm in a space that doesn't have too many things all around. But that's just me. That's my personal preference. So you might not agree with that. And then uh, one other thing that is really good about not having so many things or furniture in my physical space 
is that it allows me to have just more room to do things. So for example, I have a baby who likes to uh, crawl and, and walk and run all around uh, the physical space where we are. And he can do this a lot more easily if I don't have so much furniture. And I can also uh, move around with him and play with him in this space without all of that extra stuff. So that kind of helps us out as well. Um, how about with clothes? Let's talk about minimalism with clothes. Uh, so I'm definitely more of a minimalist when it comes to clothes. Like I said, I don't use this label for myself. I never even think about it. But I think almost anyone would say that I'm a minimalist when it comes to clothes because I don't wear a lot of different clothes. I don't have a huge variety. And I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I wear some shirts, for example, that I bought 10 years ago or 12 years ago even. I know that sounds pretty crazy to some of you, but I think for me, it doesn't matter too much, to be honest. Uh, if the shirt is still okay, if it's still in good condition, then I'll still wear it even if it's really old. So I think that uh, you can see here that I'm definitely more of a minimalist when it comes to clothes. Uh, I think this will be different for uh, everyone depending on how much they like fashion. I don't think it's necessary for everyone to uh, try to reduce the amount of clothes that they have because maybe you're someone that really gets pleasure from having some uh, different items uh, of different colors that match uh, with other articles of clothing and that is something that you're interested in. Uh, by the way, in English, we can use the word article when talking about clothing uh, to talk about one item or one piece of clothing. So for example, a shirt is an article of clothing. If I have one shirt in my hand, I'm holding one article of clothing. So if you're really into fashion, then minimalism in terms of clothes probably won't be very relevant for you. But for me, someone who doesn't care at all about fashion, it makes sense to be more minimalistic in this area of my life so that I don't have to spend money unnecessarily and so that I have more space uh, in my closet, for example, and I just don't have to worry about all that. So for me, this is a very natural one. I just don't go shopping for clothes that often. And another area in which uh, I'm a little bit minimalistic probably is in the area of electronics. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm uh, the most minimalistic person in this area because, for example, I have a pretty good computer and a decent phone, but I would say that I don't have a lot of different electronics. And I would say that I try not to buy new electronics if I don't need to. So for example, uh, recently my computer uh, was having a lot of issues. Uh, I had problems uh, just working normally with it. And so I had to buy a new computer and I bought a pretty decent computer because I didn't want to have to buy another computer anytime soon. And so I think that's more of my philosophy when it comes to electronics. I just buy the ones that I need and I try to buy a pretty good one in each category like phone or computer so that it will last me years so that I won't need to buy another one anytime soon. I think I'm a little minimalistic in this category because I don't buy new electronics if my old electronics still work perfectly. So I'll never be tempted to buy a new iPhone if my current phone works just fine, right? So I think in that sense, uh, I'm a little minimalistic in this category. Um, I think that 
maybe a good uh, philosophy when it comes to uh, trying to be more minimalistic with electronics is um, have and buy electronic devices that add some value to your life. So maybe if you're uh, spending money on electronics that you don't really need and you're probably not going to use much and they're unnecessary, well, maybe you can decide to uh, save that money or do something else with that money. That might be a helpful tip uh, for people that maybe want to um, be a little more minimalistic in that area.